Every element of a city's design, from a neighborhood's street lighting, to a sidewalk's drainage, to the shape of the skyline, has politics behind it. It's not always clear what those politics are or who the decision makers behind them were, but it's there. You just have to look closely and you'll see it. Certain legacies of racism and classism have shaped many neighborhoods, and these legacies actually continue on in new forms, even when urban planners and designers have good intentions. And with this in mind, it can become easier to understand why some communities are more resilient than others, and how structural issues stand in the way of transformational change. You're listening to The Response, a podcast and documentary series exploring the remarkable communities that arise in the aftermath of disasters. I'm your host, Tom Llewellyn, and today we're bringing you an extended interview with author Barbara Brown Wilson, an assistant professor of urban and environmental planning and the Director of Inclusion and Equity in the School of Architecture at the University of Virginia. Her current research projects include understanding how grassroots community networks reframe public infrastructure in more climate and culturally appropriate ways across the U.S. In her latest book, Resilience for All, she uncovers the politics behind our urban landscapes and lays out an alternative to business-as-usual urban design and planning. The book anchors this alternative vision with a variety of case studies that exemplify how marginalized communities are pushing back against the classism and environmental racism that is embedded in the urban design process. I'll let series producer Robert Raymond take it from here. Hey, Barbara, thanks for joining us. In your book, you call for a politics of placemaking. And I really like that idea. I think it's a good place to start. And I'm wondering if you could just broadly unpack what you mean by that a little bit for us. The politics of placemaking that I am calling forth in Resilience for All is actually not my concept. It's one that I'm holding up as really important. Planning theorist Annie Coe actually wrote about the politics of placemaking in a piece that is placemaking where Black Lives Matter. And she's holding up a literature that should be really inspirational to all of us through talking about the spatialization of race and the racialization of space. It's actually the title of a piece by George Lipsitz. And that's an academic way to, to get started. But the philosophy is that there are ways in which spaces are coded by culture, coded by economics, coded by practice and and by use, and actually by policy that are exclusionary or inclusionary, that allow for people to feel safe or people to feel unsafe, and also for people to be over-policed or in some other way managed via space. And, And often in the fields of planning and design and architecture, We don't think about that politics very explicitly. It's a predominantly white affluent set of fields. And so we bring this lens that we see as a sort of de facto good design lens to work without being critical of the positionality and the politics and the privilege that we are coding our own work with. That was just a taste. To listen to the full episode, please visit theresponsepodcast.org or find The Response wherever you get your podcasts.